Hello everyone, I'm Maria and this is CME. Welcome back to my channel and guys, I have missed you. It has been a long time since I posted a video, one month to be precisely to be precise and the reason for that is well besides having a lot of work before Christmas and the end of the year preparing stuff for the next year in work and you know all that stuff I also moved and basically all the time I had all the free time I had was to take care of that so to build furniture and buy furniture and take care of all house things that needed needs to be taken care of I didn't even do a celebratory video that I wanted to do for the 1,000 subscribers because yes, we are now over 1,000 people in the ocean community, in the ocean people community. <laughs> and I am very happy for this. I thank you so much for joining me in this adventure. It's been a lot of fun and I it will continue next year and I hope that it's just keep on growing, it will keep on growing from now. Let's stop all this chit chat and let's just go on to what this video is about. Today I will be recommending to you some ocean related books. Three of them are fiction and other two and the other two are non-fiction. Before continuing, let me just let you know I know nothing about literature, so this is literally just me telling you books that I enjoyed when I read them and also the two which are kind of more scientific I can tell you whether they are kind of cool to read or not and I'm rambling and let's just start. The first book I want to recommend is The 20 Leagues Under the Sea by Julius Verne. This book is a classic. Julius Verne, for those of you who don't know, is considered to be the father of science fiction. This book was written in 1870 and don't be scared about it because it's still really written in a very accessible writing. It could have been written by someone by someone today. And it's a very incredible book and uh, this man is was just a genius. He wrote about things that basically did not exist in the time when he was writing the, them those things, but they do exist today. The story of this book starts when professor and marine creature expert Pierre Aronnax and his uh, his faithful uh, uh, like servant uh, Consul and uh, Ned Land, who is a whale hunter, they embark in this quest to find and capture or kill this whale that has been appearing apparently all around the world and just sinking ships. And everyone, like military and everyone, is looking for this whale and trying to capture it and trying to understand what the hell is happening. So while they are on this quest, they end up being thrown overboard and when they wake up, they are in a submarine. And the captain of the submarine is Captain Nemo, who is a very charismatic and mysterious character. And then throughout, this is the beginning of the book, and throughout the book we will follow the adventures of these characters as they travel the world in this submarine. And we start to become also a bit obsessed, or at least I talk for myself, with who the hell is Captain Nemo and how the hell does he know all the things that he does. So it's a very mysterious book. It's also very beautifully written when he talks a lot about what they see under the sea, what kind of animals. So it's also really poetic. So he writes about the ocean in a very poetic way and it's really cool. It's very it's also a very thrilling book and uh, there's so much to it and I th I just think it's a classic if you like the ocean and if you like reading, you should definitely read this one. The next book I want to talk to you about is The Swarm by German author Frank Schitzig. So this is a sci-fi thriller, let's say. This is the only sci-fi book I have ever read and I really, really enjoyed it. This is passed in today's world in the present, so this is in the world of today, in the present. Uh, what was that? Uh, basically, how can I... This story starts with weird things happening related to the ocean and to marine animals. So basically the ocean or certain parts of the ocean start attacking mankind in very weird and creepy ways. And no one knows what the hell is happening. And then 
we follow the two main characters, a Norwegian marine biologist Professor Sigurd Johansson and an Inuit uh, Leon Anawak who is also a whale expert. And we not only we follow their adventure and at some point they meet and their paths cross of course to kind of solve what the hell is happening but we also follow them in the, especially in the beginning as characters and as people we specifically we follow the relationship of Professor Johansson with this woman so a kind of a bit of a romance in there as well and we follow the struggle of Leon Anawak by being an Inuit kind of feeling like he doesn't really fit anywhere and his struggles with that and his family so there's a lot of uh, character um, development in this book as well which I kind which I really enjoyed so there's not only the very intense and action-packed parts where you just cannot stop reading but there's also a bit of these parts where you kind of get really to know the characters and get really close to them in a way so this book is really 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 cool and if you like the ocean you should still read it and it, it's not gonna make you not like the ocean don't worry about it it's gonna make you like it even more I legit know people who became marine biologists because they read this book one of the amazing things as well about this book is that it's so scientifically accurate so you also really learn a lot about sorry I got interrupted um, but as I what I was saying is this book is really scientifically accurate and you also learn a lot about science in this book because the science in it is really uh, correct and accurate as I just said because the author Frank Schetzig he took five years researching before he wrote this book to make it scientifically accurate and that's also a bit scary <laughs> so it's a bit scary that what is happening in this book is kind of actually possible given what we know about what happens in this book today so this is kind of fascinating and also the people that are mentioned in this book not the main characters but a lot of the people are people that really exist they are real scientists uh, the institutes are real institute in our real institutes they actually even mention uh, the Sonne which is a German research vessel where I have been for one month thank god I did not read this book when I was on this vessel but it is really cool like the whole idea behind the book that is so scientifically accurate and the characters are really cool and you are just gonna be sitting at the edge of your seat all the time don't be please it's a really big book I know um, don't be scared by it because you will not even notice that it's so big because you will just not want to put it down so just read it read it the third book i want to recommend you is uh, the robinson cruise way by daniel defoe this book is a lot of fun to read it's another classic and for those of you who don't know it's about a man called robinson cruise way who ends up stranded in an island and it's about his survival so basically you follow him uh, through his life on this island and what he does to survive and at some point there are also new characters introduced and uh, then there's some action also happening when these characters are introduced and which is also a lot of fun and there are also quite some thrilling parts where you just don't also again you're just sitting at the edge of your seat all the time but it's a very very fun book to read it's very entertaining and I have to admit I was not expecting to like it as much as I did when I bought it I kind of bought it just because it was a small book and I was on a I, I was just got, about to catch a plane and I wanted something to read I think I read it in one go I finished I began and I finished it in one go it's really fun and I think you should definitely definitely read it the next book I want to recommend you is The Sea Around Us by Rachel Carson. So, Rachel, this is a non-fiction book. This book is kind of scientific, so basically Rachel Carson wrote about the ocean as if she was telling a story, but it's mostly about the ocean and, um, her surprise, but it's about the formation of the ocean and the currents basically the basics of 
how the ocean works and how it interacts, how the different systems interact with each other, how currents affect the layers in the ocean, how the ocean uh, masses move, how this influences the organisms that live in it. It's, it's a very, um, it has a lot of information in it. It's basically a scientific book just written in a narrative and it's very nice. It's uh, very easy to read. It's not boring and it's very interesting and you just learn a lot. I've been working in marine sciences for some years now and I still learned really a lot by reading this book and it's she you can really tell that she was a really really ocean lover by how she writes about the things she did in this book so if you are thinking of going into marine science and to just have a little of background on how the whole ocean system works this is a really good book for that so I would really recommend you read it this is the first book of a trilogy. I have not yet uh, read the second books, uh, the second or the third book, and I will for sure do it, and um, until then I keep you with this one. Rachel Carson was actually a marine biologist who turned author and activist, and uh, this book was written in the 1950s. However, most of the things she writes in here are still accurate at, until and are still accurate today. There are a couple of things that she mentions that are unknown that we already have more clues about today, about how why, and why certain things happen. However, a lot of the things she says in here are still accurate. The, most of the science that she explains is accurate. It's more the unknowns that are not so much unknowns anymore today. However, don't be afraid of reading it. You will still learn a great deal if you do. Last but not least, the last book I want to recommend you is the Man, the Orchid and the Octopus by the one and only Jacques Cousteau and co-authored by Susan Schiebelbein. Um, again, this is a non-fiction book, so this is a book told in the, uh, uh, written by Jacques Cousteau about Jacques Cousteau's adventures. For those of you who do not know who Jacques Cousteau is, Jacques Cousteau is or was a very, very famous oceanographer um, document, uh, ocean documentary director and uh, environmental activist. I have professors of mine who became marine biologists because they were inspired by Jacques Cousteau. He was a pioneer in many, many fields related to the ocean in terms of movie directing, in terms of uh, diving equipment, and he designed a lot and, and, and experimented a lot with diving equipment. And with just bringing the magnificence and magic of the ocean to people's homes through television and documentaries. So he was a very, very important person in kind of making people aware of problems that were happening and still are happening in uh, the environment and in the ocean and helped this connection with the ocean happen. And this book follows his adventures and uh, tells us a bit about his environmental views, what he learned throughout all his years of exploring the oceans, the relationship of humans and oceans. It's just, I read this book a long, long time ago, many years ago, I think, when I started university, which was a long time ago. And uh, I remember I really, really was inspired by it. And I remember that I really, really, really liked it. And I have no problems in then suggesting it to you now. I will probably reread it very soon because I'm interested in doing it. <laughs> but I think this is a really good read for someone who is interested in adventure and in the ocean or just an adventure. This is the adventures of a real life person so these are actually adventures that really happened and it's really inspiring, it's uh, really eye-opening and it's really really cool and and Jacques Cousteau, I mean Jacques Cousteau, I mean, I mean. 
yeah this was all ocean people i hope you enjoyed this video and that you can make something of these recommendations if you have other recommendations for ever for here for our community or for me please leave them down also in the description box below i'm always very happy to have new books to read and suggestions and if you have read any of the books that i just showed you also please leave your comment or your uh, opinion on these books down in the description box below because i really love to talk about these things and to discuss opinions so I'm really looking forward to learn about them if you have any and any other questions in the comments you know just write them down again thank you so much for like being on this journey with me in my youtube channel and uh, it has been a lot of fun and I really love this thing we have going on here and uh, I hope we, it continues I have a lot of things planned for next year and I am so excited to see where this channel is going I honestly really 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 honestly did not think I would reach 1,000 subscribers in less than a year really I know 1,000 subscribers is nothing in YouTube numbers but honestly I thought no one would be interested in listening to what I had to say but I'm really happy that you guys are interested and I'm really really overwhelmed overwhelmed overwhelming me what <laughs> overwhelmingly happy with the response and the interactions that I have been having through the channel and thank you so much ocean people it's ha it has been a lot of fun and I hope it will continue that also I want to thank my um, 23 Twitter followers <laughs> Um, thank you. <laughs> I don't feel so alone. I had I never really used Twitter until a couple of months ago and uh, but now because last month I was away from YouTube I started being active on Twitter and uh, if I'm away from one of the, my social networks I try to be more active either on Instagram or or Twitter now so yeah if you want to like follow me <laughs> not by pity I, I actually don't really care I think it's really cute I always like yay someone liked my tweet <laughs> um that's kind of sad Maria I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and uh, if we do not see each other before New Year's I wish you all a happy New Year's and uh, see you soon ocean people and uh, all the best and once again thank you for being on this journey with me